Again today in Central Africa, where Equatorial Guinea's Supreme Court has upheld a ban on the country's main opposition party, as well as lengthy prison sentences for 21 of its members. The Citizens for Innovation, or CI Party, was dissolved by a court in February after it was accused of involvement in acts of violence ahead of last year's elections. A lawyer for the CI Party described the court decision as a sentence for dictatorship and shame. Human rights groups say corruption, poverty and repression have thrived and that the presidency of Theodoro Obiangungwema has been in power since 1979. So let's get more on this story from a lecturer at the University of Lagos and an African affairs analyst, Mr. Okwe Okbala. Thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you very much. So what do you make of Equatorial Guinea's Supreme Court ban on the country's main opposition party and the lengthy prison sentences for 21 of its members? Well, it's a sad commentary on leadership and governance in Africa. It also shows how African leaders use and abuse institutions that are supposed to help you, the society, entrench at the freedom of its citizens. You know, uh, the President Nguema has been in power for nearly 39 years, and he's a 75-year-old man. Meanwhile, he can't even allow more space for the opposition to express themselves. Already they have 100 members of, of, of uh, the legislature. 99 and for his party and this thing started by saying oh the opposition cannot even campaign in the stronghold of their i mean in the in, in the area of where their leader comes from and that was what started the fracas and you know when they when the people reacted and then most of them are clamped in jail now 30 years that uh, 30 years and about 21 of them and 135 in detention 135 in detention and it, it shows that look he cannot even tolerate. They are not even a threat to him. But even that small noise that they make, he, would, he kind of doesn't want to hear it. So, what what is this likely to have on the country's quality? No, of course. I mean, there is a. It, 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 you know, the unfortunate thing about democracy is that democracy is becoming a tool for dictators to push away outsiders who would have probably helped to intervene. Because uh, before soldiers will stage queues. Now, queues are no longer fashionable because once you say it's the democracy, they say, oh, no, you cannot topple a democratically elected. But then African leaders have found a way to use that. Say, oh, we are a democracy. Meanwhile, no, there's nothing apart from just uh, electoral fraud that happens to return them to power. There's nothing that they don't respect human rights. They don't respect anything. Meanwhile, they, they push away those who could have, and then they make it unfashionable to, for people to, to uh, remove them through queues. And also say, oh, look, you can a democratically elected government, you cannot push it out. So uh, it means that there must be a way of restoring true democracy to African, to, to African, to most African countries. Otherwise, uh, what will happen is that we have dictatorship wearing the hood of democracy. So how are we going to do that, considering the fact that, like you said, he's been in power for 39 years, and he's not the only African leader. There are so many other African leaders who cling on to power. Why, why are they lasting this long, and what can be done to change that? What can be done is that, look, you know, African, we cannot, it is obvious that Africans cannot hear themselves. Uh, we need, international community needs to, I mean, do more to support democracy in Africa. Because what we have in Africa, most of them are dictatorships. And uh, because it was more or less like, I rub my back, I rub your back. When they go there, I mean, most of them, you can count in one finger. I mean, the fingers of one hand, the true democracy that exists in Africa. A good number of them, I mean, thrive by suppressing opposition, arresting them, and making sure that they don't have space in the media to express themselves, and the true electoral fraud. Even committing, I mean, they will do, oh, there's election, but meanwhile, they dictate. In fact, if you look at what happened there, even the institution of the Supreme Court, you have to say, in the name of the president, we, can't, we reject the appeal. In fact, they are rejecting the appeal in the name of the person that actually. So that means that they are, they are taking dictation. The Supreme Court, an institution that should check the, uh, the, the, the excess, I mean, the excessive use of power by the executive, is saying that we are doing this in the name of the executive. So in other words, we are saying that, oh, whatever he wants us to do, we do. Now, from what you've said, the president's party, you know, controls the judiciary and the legislature. So is there hope for the common man of getting justice? 
Well, there, there will always be hope because, I mean, one thing with human beings and human system is that nothing lasts forever. I believe that, I mean, the, the, uh, in the words of um, our former president, uh, President Obasanjo, the island of integrity and the island of it, uh, we should keep pushing on that, uh, on that edge so that we keep expanding the island of democracy. And when nothing came cheap, never, nobody knew that appetite can go the way it went. Nobody knew that certain African countries, I mean, that certain systems that we are suppressing the people in many places we go. What, is, what we have is that People outside should help so that it will, be, it will be quickened. And then the cost, the sacrifice will not be so much. Not until the country is plunged into crisis completely. Lecturer and African Affairs Analyst, Mr. Okwe Okwala, thank you so much for joining us on Network Africa. You're most welcome. Zimbabwe's opposition leader, Nelson Chamisa, says he did nothing wrong by offering to marry his 18-year-old sister to President Emerson Mangagwa if he wins 5% of the vote. Mr. Chamisa, who took over leadership of the Movement for Democratic Change, MDC, earlier this year, came under fire for the comments caught on camera. He says the complaints are coming from political detractors and that he was happy to make the bet because he knows it won't happen. Mr. Chamisa sees himself as Morgan Shangarai's successor following the veteran MDC leader's death in February, but he has been challenged for the leadership by Tokuzani Kupe. She was Mr. Shangarai's deputy in the party and served as deputy prime minister from 2009 and 2013 in the unity government that the MDC formed with the ruling ZANU-PF party to end conflict in Zimbabwe.